I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. And we're back for another installment of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined, as always, by the technician, Chris Aceto. And Chris, I, I just literally got back from Sarasota. I was uh, at the beach all day. With my, my sister was uh, visiting up there, having a little, uh, I guess you could call it, uh, I think it's her anniversary tomorrow. So she was celebrating with her husband, and I met her up there, and we hung out at the beach. You seem to be living it up. Yeah, yeah, I'm burnt. Look, yeah, I, I was at the beach too, but I didn't get burnt because it was only 50 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I would imagine in Maine it's a lot cooler over oh, there. Yeah, so, so yeah, it was good. So, got some good food, some good sun. I think I'm producing a lot of vitamin K. I, feel, I mean, a lot of vitamin D, D3, feeling it in my skin, and all is good. But we had a busy weekend. We had the Arnold UK, excuse me, Arnold Brazil. We'll talk about that a little bit and Rafa Brandeo's victory. And then we're going to talk about Michael Dubul, who got the, the crap beat out of him in the UK. We're going to go through, over that story. And uh, I don't know where should we start. Oh, I went to Mel's show this past weekend. So no, I met. That, uh, yeah, big deal. We'll talk about that. I met. So I met. The, <laughs> Dave, hand, go ahead. Big deal. We'll talk about it. Big deal. <laughs> No, no had, show of the Arnold. There's, you know, they're right on par with each other. They're about they're equal. They're about equal. But I had a good time because I hadn't, you know, gone to a local show in a while, and I had a, I helped the kid in the show. He won the uh, the classic uh, short class of so all natural kid, really good. And uh, so I was the first show I'd gone to so, uh, to like actually help someone at the show. It's been a mm -hmm. long time. Usually I just do it, you know, via text messaging, but. So that was fun. John Hansen was there. I got the. I went out to dinner with him after. Let's see if I could pull up a John Hansen picture. John Hansen is ageless. This guy, he, yeah. he's still he's big still. You know, he lives the bodybuilding lifestyle still every day of his life. You know. Yeah, what do you? Let me guess. He wore. I was going to say he wore a jacket. He. No, no, no. He had his shorts. <laughs> he had shorts and a and a, and a tight t shirt bag on there. Yeah, so. that's John. How old is he now? I don't know. That's good. I think is he older than us? He 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 probably is, but he looks, you know. He looks younger than us because he's I got his full head of hair. I think he went to Turkey, got that hair thing like bumps to like <laughs> He's got good hair. Yeah, he's got well, you got good hair too, so and you just don't come here. Botox, Botox going on. Yeah, but I didn't go to Turkey. <laughs> That's true. That is I kept I I kept I'm I was like Lee Priest. I kept my cycle under two hundred megs a week. <laughs> <laughs> How come Jay still has all his hair? <laughs> and Dorian. It's called genetics. Yeah. Good genetics. So it was great seeing uh, John. And of course, uh, let me see what else. There's my Mel pictures. Oh, uh, there's Mel. Mel and I had a good time. That's my friend Paul came too. So we had a, we had a good time all was good. The show is Mel is so smart. He starts the night show at, at 4 30 or four o'clock in the afternoon. So we were by seven, eight, seven thirty, we were seven forty five, we were at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, you can go and eat. Get it Very over smart. with. Very smart. Mel's like, I'm not I'm not, I'm not ending my show at twelve midnight. <laughs> uh, it was going good. We had fun. All right. Let me uh pull up this picture here. Hold on. Dave can't wait to get to the gossip. Well, it's it's you know it's what's yeah. terrible what happened. But by the way, Michael Dubul, let me I'll tell, give the whole story, but that I I'll, at least what we know. And he did contact us, and I know Sid was in talk and was in contact with him. Once uh, everything gets settled out, he's going to come on the show and tell us what happened. But he um, 
He was at this show in the UK that's run by the two bros, pros guys. You know, the yeah. guy in is the promoter. And evidently, I don't know what happened, but the, his story is that he was going, he was trying, he wanted to go backstage. I guess they wouldn't let him because, you know, they have like, you know, Paul, you know, they, they can't let every, I don't, we don't even get backstage a lot, some of the shows because it's too busy. So they didn't let him backstage, but I guess once the show was kind of almost over, they let him back because I guess his wife was competing. And he went back there, and, and I don't know what transpired the whole day, like if there was back and forth between him and, and, and the security guys, but evidently the security guys who worked the venue, not the security guys who were employed by Ian and the two bros pros, the promoters, but they had, I guess the venue itself had security people. And they must have been told, look, don't let people back. They, you, know, you know how they give them orders. And then these guys carried out like, like the, the Gestapo. And I guess, I don't know, maybe – Maybe whoever let him go back because it was the end of the show. Maybe the other guys didn't know it or something like that. But evidently, four guys came back there and kicked the crap out of him. They broke his nose. They, he gave a black eye. I think he has two ribs broken. And obviously, he was upset about that, as, as would anyone. And I guess he felt that the promoters in some way were, were pissed at him or something like that because he was complaining about the show or something like that. But at least from the information that I've gleaned, you know, I don't think it had anything to do with the promoters. I think that it, it seems to me, and once again, I'm speculating, but no matter what, no one deserves to get the crappy out of them. So someone screwed up somewhere. But I think what happened was the security from the venue, that's what I'm told, at least my, from my inside sources, this, the security who worked the venue, who were employed by the venue, were told, don't let anyone back there. For some reason, they didn't like his attitude. And instead of just you know, grabbing him and, 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 you know, removing him or telling him to leave, they decided they were going to um, rough him up. Now, that's unacceptable. Now, I understand that two of the guys were actually arrested and the other two guys ran. So, you know, you don't run when, <laughs> when you didn't do anything wrong, right? So I'm assuming that, that, you know, these guys screwed up in some capacity. I guess where the controversy is, he feels that the promoter was behind this and the promoter, according to my sources, had nothing to do with this. It was the security who worked for the venue. Now, that's the information we have at this moment. I guess they're right now they're getting the security cam footage, and they want to see because I think these the security guys are saying that he he struck them first or he pushed them first or something like that. So, regardless, even if he did, I mean, four guys could have grabbed him and, and removed him without without breaking his ribs and his and, and his whole face. So that's where I think the, 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 obviously, as you said to me earlier, when we talked about this, someone's getting sued here. Yeah. And it's not Michael the bull. No, no, it's not Michael the bull. So he, he may, obviously. he may, uh, I don't want to make light of it. Sorry that happened to you, Michael, but you may have a, you know, your best payday of uh, your bodybuilding career. Yeah. Yeah. You used, used to work with him, didn't you? Because, because security is not meant as I'm sure the, uh, his lawyer will point out, it's to secure the area, not to, uh, that's your job, to secure your area. And if someone breaks through, your job is not to beat them into the ground. Right. I, I used to bounce. When I, when I first left medical school and I was bodybuilding and I, I had to make money, I would bounce. And there was two sets of bouncers at this club I worked at. The guys who... If someone started trouble, we would grab the guy and we would just escort him out and we would just say, get out of here. You can't, you're done for the night. And then there was the other set of guys that worked there that when someone started acting out, they would grab him, take him to the door and they'd beat the crap out of him and then just kick his ass out the door. And those guys were just like a bunch of sadistic, you know, retards, you know. Well, Why they had huge, to the, the, the analogy before is like beyond a stretch simply because when you're bouncing, you're not you don't you're not insured like a security firm is mm. you just take people who are you know big and muscular usually or or can fight and two you're not dealing it's implied when you're bouncing that you're going to be dealing with potentially dangerous people who are intoxicated and with intoxication right you know it implies that there's an element of a fight possible so it's to you know I understand kind of where you're going, but this is like a security firm. No, I'm saying they're they're, they're completely in the wrong, is what I'm saying. That's, that's, there's that's there's no reason this guy should have gotten this beat up. 
no matter what he said or what he did, you know, and I don't think he was, he certainly wasn't drunk. So whether he was mad at them or not and was, was yelling at them, that didn't give them the right to beat the crap out of him. You know what I mean? And even if he did, let's say they grabbed him and he pushed him away or something like that. You still don't, you still don't beat the crap out of the guy. You, you restrain him. There's four guys. There's one of him. They could have gotten him out of there. I'm sure without hurting him that much. So um, it's a shame it happened at a bodybuilding show, you know, but um, until we know exactly what happened, I think it's, it's, it's wrong of him to, 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 you know, to, I guess, accuse the, the promoter of doing it because that doesn't seem to be the case, but we might find out otherwise. I don't know. But for now, it seems from what I'm told, it was the security team of the, uh, the venue. Cause sometimes these well, venues, we, we, can, we can clear it up and get all the facts, Steve. With well, that's, Washington. that's all we have we'll, right now. We'll, we'll put the Washington post in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny, but, um, you know, there is a security camera footage that they're going to be getting and that should tell the whole story. We'll, we'll see exactly what happened because, yeah. and I, I, you know, if, if there was nothing, if Michael was, was not physical with these guys and they just decided to beat him up, he, like you said earlier to me, he has some lawsuit. Well, the, 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 camera, the cameras, the cameras, of course, never tell the whole story. Michael will tell the whole story and the cameras will simply back up the whole story. Well, or, it'll tell the story of, of whether he struck them or not, because they're saying he hit them first. Right? I'm, that's what you're telling me. No, I'm saying he, they're saying that. If, no, if we I don't, see, that, him, the if point we don't is, see him hitting them, then obviously they're lying, you know? So the, the security camera's not going to, they're going to be able to tell us exactly what happened, is what I'm saying. Well, the, the, whoever's, whoever insured the security firm, hmm. they're going to, Oh, Michael's lawyer. Michael law Michael's lawyer is going to shake him up, shake him up, and then he's going to shake him down, which means get the money out of him, and he deserves <laughs> it because it's, yeah. you, know, uh, you know you can spin it all you want. It's for people who are in security, which means to secure an area, not to sec secure and you know anyone who passes this area beat him down, no matter what he says too. You know he could have had a bad day and. Hurled every verbal insult, you know, insult at him that he, you know, that I'm not saying he did, but you know, it doesn't justify uh, violence. I mean, this is not bounces in a bar dealing with a guy who's, you know, done quaaludes plus ten tequilas. <laughs> it's it's a guy we all know and well liked and at a show and. Things like this should never happen. I mean, look yeah. at you, Dave. You were you were escorted out professionally <laughs> at the Miami Nationals. They yeah. said, Dave, you have to go by the security. Yeah. Was, that was, yeah, well, uh, we, we, we see where Steve Carroll is now, the guy who kicked me out, yeah. right? He's, he's done. <laughs> oh, my God. Did, didn't you used to help Michael the Bull when he first turned pro? Yeah, when he turned pro, he's a, he's yeah. a great guy. Yeah. So you, I, I mean, you, you know, he's not a troublemaker, right? No, I, I, I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed working with him a lot. I always enjoy seeing him. I've enjoyed seeing him go from. Uh, I think it took him. I think we were prepping during COVID or something, a pre. -COVID. Anyways, he was like second, 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 and uh, eventually he turned pro and he moved on with another coach and he's he's done fantastic since then and you know i've followed his improvements and like to see him at shows and like to see his improvements and you know he's he's on at least from the outside what i see my dealings with him with him he's always been uh very cordial with with you know people and and professional with people and uh dare i say humble in a sport that's just rife with arrogance yeah yeah, well, he he did post something on his Instagram, and he wrote, "I'll put it up here. Hold on. I've been competing in the IFBB Pro League for nine straight years. Competed in over twenty different countries. Never had an issue with any show I competed or watched. Uh, I have always been and will always support the IFBB Pro League. When I criticize a small show because I want the sport to get better, nothing else. Today I felt embarrassed and I re uh, felt really in pain. I'm not talking about physical pain because I can take much more than that, but." get beaten in front of people and in front of my partner is a hard feeling to explain. 
I honestly wished uh, for that moment to be dead and not have to look at anyone in the eyes. I will reply to everyone when I get a chance. Still not. Well, this, Dave, this is this is called uh, that statement is statement number one for his lawyer. It's called humiliation and pain and suffering. Right, right, right. Meaning, which is, which I can understand. You can totally understand that. No, you don't want you don't you don't no one in the nobody in the sport from the toughest guy you know, down to the, you know, not toughest guy wants to get beat down by people in front of his peers. Yes. Because it's, that's, that's, you know, it's, uh, unless it, you know, I'm not making, not unless it's done in private, but if nobody saw it, it's one thing. But if it's in front of people that you know, it's just like, what a, it's, uh, it's like being violated. Of, uh, yeah, this I don't know. It's it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. And, you know, it's good that he wrote that because that is his gut instinct feel. It's not contrived. He didn't write that five days later. You know, by a lawyer. He put that out in public. You know, immediately thereafter the the, the event, and I'm sure that will weigh heavily when he seeks damages, which he should, yeah, or for what happened to him. Well, yeah, the only, the only thing you know what, people, yeah. how many people have you seen in arguments at bodybuilding shows? You've seen it over the years and yeah. somebody comes and diffuses it or, you know, it's a verbal argument and it could be right. over something stupid. Sure. And it could be about getting backstage. I've wanted to be backstage and, you know, at, at shows at the Olympia or something like this. Right. And some you can't come backstage and I want, you know, I, you want, Look, you want I had to permission. To, I had permission to go backstage at that uh, at that at that uh, nationals, and that's why when I got kicked out, you know, <laughs> we see what happened to the promoter. He got kicked out. So, <laughs> it look most guys are very very. I, I don't see too many arrogant guys at shows where they don't listen to the rules and everything like that. There's very few people that that do that, and I, I certainly know that Michael DeBull, who's competing, is not going to cut his own nose to spite his face. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. he wants to be able to. He just placed at the, you know, at the Arnold Classic, you know, at the Olympic. So he, he obviously, whatever he wanted to do, he didn't. He wasn't expecting to get a beating from it. So yeah. uh, I, I, I think my gut is telling me that the, the venue security guys were just overzealous. Who the freak? Up? Maybe they were drinking. I don't know. They obviously <laughs> overreacted to him. Maybe he said something that irritated them. And they they overreacted, and, and you know what? That overreaction is going to cost that venue, who are you know, like you said, the insurance company, a lot of money because they're going to have to pay this guy something because this that's totally unacceptable. And the guys who beat him up should be arrested for for you know, uh, for assault. There's no doubt about that. So hopefully this gets uh, figured out over the next couple of days. And like I said, Michael will come on, and I wanted to say hi to Leslie Timble who's watching, and I see uh, Xavier too. What's up, Xavier? Desktop bodybuilding. Xavier. Xavier probably has the inside track on the uh, on on the debul de, 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 debacle, the debul debacle. How about that? Say that ten times fast, Chris. The, the uh, bull debacle. Mm -hmm. The bull debacle. Bull debacle. I can I can I can uh, say it twice. <laughs> All right, let's let's get to the real juicy uh, story of the day, which was obviously the show that took place down in Brazil, run by Tamer and Tarek, his brother. Uh, the Arnold Classic Brazil. Well, I think it's called the Arnold Classic South America, technically. And the uh, Rafa Brandeo was the kind of the favorite going into the show. He wins it, uh, but certainly not uh, convincingly in some people's minds. It was pretty controversial. Obviously, it was a close show between him, Tony O'Burton, and uh, Good Vito, who you helped. Um, I'd like to get your. I'll put up some pictures and video while you. I would like to get your opinion on the, the results. Um, I think the results, you know, were, you know, you could, I, I think they were accurate. You know, I mean, I could, I could sit on the judge panel and place them one, two, three, that, that way. Um, I just think like a lot of people that, uh, we weren't expecting to see a lot of vulnerability. And we did, I think with Raphael at the show. Well, what do you think wanted for him? <clears throat> I think his lines won it from. I we if you if you go back and we, we predicted the show, you know, I said I already knew that you know uh Kavita would 
be in tremendous condition. And I think I implied in that show that it's still hard to take out somebody, one who's as professional. The professionalism helped a lot. I'll tell you what helped the tan, the presentation, the confidence that helped Raphael a lot. In addition to the flow and the lines, you know, I think probably because nobody really dominated all the poses, you know, and people had certain strengths that you go back well, to. Well, let's, how about we take one person at a time? What, what was, what, why, if, if we say that Rafa didn't deserve it, why would that be? To me, it looks like he's not that well conditioned. Yeah, it was condition and issue. Yeah, yeah. We know he's got good symmetry and good balance, and he's and he yeah. flows well in small ways. Yeah, but he wasn't conditioned, and he didn't. He, I mean, he didn't look as. I think he was worse than the Arnold USA, don't you think? Yeah, it was less less round, less full, less conditioned. Yeah, and what what, what do you think caused that? Too much dehydration? What What do you think was going on here? You know, it could be fatigue, right? I mean, it's, it's yeah, it could be fatigue. Um, you know. You, you you just you know when you when you're confident and you have like tunnel vision for a show you it's easy to not understand how fatigued your body is and when you're going from the arnold ohio which is clearly like you know the main event and you put all that effort into that show um you know when you you get a great placing there third and then you you know, you're, you're sure you're going to knock it out of the park when you get on your home turf. You don't realize how tired you are to like extend it another, you know, it's not a week extension. It's a month or, or more, I think, six weeks. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Antonio Burton looks might way better in this back double bicep pose to me. I mean, and this was a, this was a, this was a great shot for Rafa a few weeks, you know, at the Arnold USA. Yeah. Um, Tonio's peeled here. I mean, this guy's got glutes and hamstrings, lower back. There's no wrinkles. It's, I mean, he's – and yeah. good veto. You know, aside from good veto's tanning issue that he had, I, I think that uh, he really was very dominant. For yeah, the, the tanning – we're looking into that. We think that it was a uh, – it was uh, deliberate. <laughs> someone they mixed, someone they mixed, they mixed the They mixed the jam tanner with shoe polish. <laughs> You know what, Dave? How peeled would would good Vito, good Vito look if he had Raphael's color? Yeah. Well, I I mean, this is I guess is this the finals because he's definitely darker here than he was the pre-judging. No, he has more oil there, but he just oh. because he had no oil on as well, oh. you know. Or I think he got sucked in or to the shoe polish and pre-judging. I mean, good Vito and Tonio were, were definitely the two hardest guys, you know. In that sense, I mean, I mean, the only the only knock you can give against Vito is maybe his waist isn't as small as Tonio's and, and Rafa's, but he's got a lot of freaking muscle. His legs. Well, it, it's it's insane. on the front double with the vacuum. It's small. As, as yeah. Small, as for he sure. uh, he almost had, looks. And we were talking about this the other day. He looks a little Jay Cutlerish, you know. Yeah, he's got a moments. little. He's got a little Jay going on. You know, he this leg. is the first pro show. He doesn't have a lot of stage experience. I mean, you know, did he hit the? Hit, hit the poses like the side chest and side tricep. He could have got way more really out of that, those poses. Um, now, I mean, we weren't there, but to me, watching the videos, it, I, it looks to me like Tony O'Burton should have won this show. But with, with good veto in second place, possibly. And then uh, Rafa in third. And I like Rafa's physique, but I just don't think Rafa was tight enough. His lower back and his glutes, it's almost like they – Kind of gave him a consolation prize here, and and I don't I don't know you know because I wasn't there in person, but I I don't think a lot of people uh, felt that you know Rafa necessarily deserved this victory. Yeah, I mean, there's there's people who are saying that, and you know, the people that are who are the people? Well, you you said you you told me all the people in the comments. Well, yeah, and you know, the people in the comments can be 100 percent wrong, they, and they can be 50 percent right, but. You know, there's some truth to when, quote, everyone is talking, or, you know, a lot of people are talking, you know, there was a, all this discussion like, oh, you know, when Raphael's working with Chris, he just can't get big enough. Well, maybe there's some truth to that. You know what I mean? He, he gets in shape, but maybe, you know, maybe he just can't get big enough. 
well, maybe people are wrong, but maybe there's some truth. So if a lot of people are saying good veto, lots and lots and lots and lots of people say good veto, and lots of people say Raphael, but an oh, odd number of people say good veto or uh, Antonio should have won, maybe there's some truth to it. Well, you, so, you've got, I mean, you seem to think that the good veto did not get a, a fair shake. I mean, that's when we well, first talked about I think, it. Dave, here, here's my, you know, you asked me at the beginning of the show, yeah. I, I, and I said I could see how the results went that, where they were. So Raphael first, you know, I, I love his physique. I probably judged there. I probably would have had him first. Um, but let's put that aside for a minute and uh, – you know, I, I think that um, what what surprised me is, uh, unless this is not a bodybuilding competition, it's just showmanship. The last call out of prejudging was um, good veto, Antonio and Raphael, and Raphael started in the middle, and and then uh, Antonio ended in the middle and uh and good veto just stayed in the spot and i just thought well that's odd why even call good veto out at all period yeah i, don't I mean know. because obviously what you're doing is you're trying to compare first and second so if you're trying to nail the judging having the guy who you think is third in that call out is just nothing more than a distraction well, they, yeah, it is, but they did that obviously because the crowd was going crazy, and so, um, now, you know, sometimes when a guy competes for the first time, you know, you might not, I, third place in this lineup is really good, but I, you know, I, I, I think that we're going to see Good Vito possibly win a show. I, I understand now he's, uh, I just did just send it to me. I don't know if, if you're even aware. I'm, just, I would assume you're aware since you're his coach. He's doing the Detroit Pro. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't panic, Brad Rowe. I once got Brad Rowe's prejudging wrong and Della Rose's on the wrong day. I said, I can't know everything. Uh, yeah, he's doing Detroit. He's going to go up there with uh, uh, my good friend uh, Pacholik, um, uh on Wednesday. So he'll be in great hands, mm -hmm. surely. Um, uh, I think uh, Pacholik is... Uh, outstanding bodybuilding coach in Brazil. So he's going to go with Gravito and uh, they're going to stay together Wednesday. It's a Sunday show. So I, I think it can be better for this, this week, you know, because this is like the first, it's the second show we worked together. The first one, of course, was they pulled the Russian visa on them. Remember? Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, and then this is like the first show where he actually got to compete in which was great because it's in his adopted home country of Brazil, which he loves. And he speaks Portuguese, by the way. Right. Uh, and he learned that fluently very quickly. He makes YouTube videos in Portuguese. That's crazy and, that he uh, learned language that well. Yeah, that's amazing. So I, I think that he can um, at least at a minimum duplicate it. Well, I, 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 this is the way it's going to pan out, Dave. You watch. He will have a great tan and people will say, oh, he missed his peak last week. <laughs> uh, Dave, you know how important the tan can be. That's it's super important. And nothing is worse than a too dark or like a mud-like hue. I should post, Dave, the first call I made at 5 a.m. I morning, think you should be having him tan in a tanning bed or something like that. You know, yeah, that's too. what Jose said. Jose said have him tan this he week. He needs the base tan, the guy. He has, he's white as a ghost. Yeah. Oh, uh, I called he's Carl. White as the Russian oh. winter. You know, I, I called Collar at uh, 5 a.m. from Pro 10 asking for, <laughs> for help in Detroit. Yeah. Well, you know what the problem is? You have to have a base tan. I think it's very risky to, to go up there with no base tan and put some coloring on because then you're just at the, the you're basically at the mercy of whatever yeah, the color yeah, the, 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 yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, I think it's still a great you know, pro debut he made. He's third place. I, I, if anyone should be upset, really, Antonio Burton might be the one who should have been upset because he was perfect. There was nothing he could have done better than what he did. I mean, he was in absolutely stellar shape. He looked great. He made improvements from last year. I, I would have had, I would have had him winning the show. I don't, like I said, I don't know if you agree with that, but I, I definitely would have. Had no, him. I mean, you, you can just, you can, 
you can make the argument for sure that he's good enough to win. I think you can make an, argu an argument for good veto in terms of freak factor to win. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's just odd that the, the, the I, I will say this. It, you you don't too often see, um, you know, a winner lose both back shots, right? Because Goodvito clearly wins a back last spread, and um, and Burton wins a back double. That's not to say it's not. But if you look at the look at this look at this shot, look at Rafa's glutes; they're just not, you know, tight. I mean, Tonio destroys him on this shot. What does the desktop top king say? Is he here? <laughs> I don't know. We can ask him. Bring him in. Bring him in. We'll help you raise him. <laughs> what do you think, Xavier? If you're still watching. Go to the audience like Phil Donahue. Go to the phone call. <laughs> we should do a poll if Sid's watching. Sid, put up a poll. See what the, 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 the viewers think. Um, at, at the at, at, at you know, at uh, this guy said he has Tony O'Burton winning. Yeah. So. I don't know. I just I think that it, they didn't reward him for for he did he did his homework. He showed up here, and it, to me, it looks like you know they gave it to Rafa because it was Rafa's you know hometown, and uh, I, I I you know, and I've seen Rafa amazing before. So I mean, this is obviously not Rafa's best. Uh, he was he left the door open a little bit, and I think that Tonio really closed the door here. I don't I don't I don't see a uh, you know a assuming good Vita was placed properly, but you know we can debate that all night long. Assuming he was, and these guys were battling for first and second, I don't see how Tonio loses, to be honest with you. So, but that's just my—that's me personally. Leslie agrees with me. So, <laughs> what's the desktop guy say? Do we have any? We'll just just pull in one of the like. The this guy said Tonio was robbed. Um. Oh, here he is. Hold on. Desktop. Uh, Xavier had uh, Tonio at the finals. Prejudging, you thought it was close between all three, but yeah. like we weren't there. So, but I'm just saying, from what I'm looking at in videos and pictures, it looked like uh, Tony. I, you know what? I was not there. They all have different physiques. They all have <clears throat> certain strengths, um, and I wonder this, Dave. Honestly, is I, I think that. Um, Raphael falls into the category of the Dennis Wolf, where I, I've told the story before, where he's standing next to Sean Roden at, at a show, and clearly better than Sean standing in the lineup. And they stood them in the lineup, and they stood them in the lineup, and Steve was judging, and they like asked for like the front last spread for like a disproportionate amount of like poses, and I thought. Uh, Dennis Wolf was smashing Sean on the front lat spread, you know, and yeah. then they'd stand relaxed, and then they'd, you know, so it leaves an impression of like shape and fullness, standing relaxed, and like your your money shots. Mm -hmm. Maybe that swayed the judges, you know. It, it depends on sometimes when you're there, you know, how many, you know, if they if they ask for the back shots over and over and over, maybe the show would be different because you'd have like okay. You know, the winner, you know, the guy we want, or I think, is the judge, you know, Rafael to win. He's not winning the back last spread or the back double. Yeah. So, I mean, if they ask for that over and over and over. Right. Then it leaves a different impression than if they yeah. ask for, like, front last spread, front double, which I think Rafael's extremely strong in. Yeah. According to the scorecards, uh, Rafa won six points to nine points. Obviously, the lower point value is the better. Uh, it, both the pre-judging and the final, so they didn't change the scores. And he uh, he won it. It looked like Good Vito had straight uh, third place votes, finished in third, and then William Martins finished in the fourth position unanimously with Andre Carlo or Carle. I don't know how you pronounce it, Carleo, in f fifth place. So congratulations to those guys. Uh, there was a wellness division there as well, and uh, Thane Fogel from. Brazil, imagine that. Well, Brazilian girls, <laughs> they won. So, congratulations. Did you see the um, 
the uh, speaking of two bros pros where Michael Dubul got beat up, they had a classic physique there, and uh, I'm so happy. Let me pull this picture up. They had a classic in Brazil too, Dave. No, I know. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I wanted to mention this guy because this. I remember we both liked this. Guy. We loved this guy at the Arnold. Uh, yeah. Really good. I'll pull up this page. Manuel Ricotti. Yeah, very I talked him. I told him how great he looked at the Arnold, and he was so happy. I said, "Just keep going. You're going to get a. You're going to get. In, you're going to get into the Olympia." And sure enough, you know, he's got yeah. it. So, anyway, congratulations to him. Yeah, I'm trying to find the. Um, I don't see the results of the uh, of the classic in the Brazil a Brazilian show. one. What? A Brazilian. I know, but I'm saying I don't see. It. Not, I wanted to see the scorecards. I don't see it. Unfortunately, I don't even know his name, but I know what his physique looks like. I could draw his physique. It's the kid, the kid I think, who lost to, uh, uh, I was going to say Vin Diesel. Diesel, rough Diesel. <laughs> Diesel. Uh. The guy who, who, who was more muscular than uh, rough Diesel, who was harder than rough Diesel. And yet we discussed it and you said, who'd you, you know, who'd you have winning the show? I think it was in... Kuwait or India or something, I said rough diesel. So it's it's uh, the guy who you know uh, was second to rough. You don't have it anywhere on Instagram. I'm I'm trying to find the pictures right now. He's very good. Actually, the the, the top three at the show. I I looked quick when I was driving home from the beach of 50 degrees back to my house, and uh, all three were phenomenal in the top top three here. What did you do this weekend? You were busy. Um, I went yesterday to Old Orchard Beach. You did? Yeah, I went down and stayed at our place on the beach for one night, which I oh, used. Oh, like it's not, not Orchard Beach in, in the Bronx. You're talking about Orchard <laughs> no, Beach. It's much in better. Maine. Old Orchard Beach, Maine. Oh, I'm sorry. I, Dave, I went one day and one night, and it feels like I was away 10 days and 10 nights. Why is that? It's so relaxed and it's insane. Did you fall behind? Huh? No, Did you I, fall behind in all your work? One day and one night. That's it. That's all wow. I was there. I felt like I was there 10 days and 10 nights because I was so relaxed. My cortisol is probably, levels probably went so low that, that uh, <clears throat> that my glutes and hamstrings are in more than Raphael's. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gone back to the gym after training with your son for one day no i went on my birthday and my son said okay you get train next week i said yeah <laughs> now you're too busy if people saw my schedule they did they would have heart attacks if people saw my schedule they would have heart attacks they could not keep most people couldn't keep up with my schedule i say that without i say that with more confidence to judge in the arnold south america is, oh, I think I think the guy you're talking about is this guy Fabio, right? Yes, Fabio. He's good. He looks fantastic. Really I'll pull him up. Let me pull, you pull know up what? some pictures. He, I'll tell you why he looked fantastic. He was fantastic when he lost to Rough Diesel. He was too big. I know that sounds ridiculous, but his legs were too big. He looked too powerful for classic. It wasn't the right look, and I thought, okay. He's in the wrong division, but whatever he did with the quads, he toned oh. he trained them last. So I, I wasn't paying attention. What to say? Uh, Xavier had his uh, his own uh, Fabio Junior. Yeah, he had his own little thing about it. The breakdown. <laughs> I should have I should have looked at the comments. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, three quarters what, back. Look at his. I, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't. I'm trying to. <laughs> what I really was looking for because I like to see what the scorecards are to see how close it was. But I don't, they, for some reason, they don't have the scorecard up on on that on the the classic guy. It's only the wellness in the open for some reason. So yeah, he looks fantastic. Look at the little Sean Roden shot. Yeah, yeah. Look at the glutes on the side yeah. shot. He's he's superbly polished. Yeah. Perfectly peaked. 
But how do you think he does in like in the Olympia lineup? Good, good, good. You think, this, oh, you think he will do well? Yeah, this, 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 this. He'll get a look. This, this guy will get a look this time. Last time, I think they would just overlook him because subliminally they would say, you know, subconsciously, subconsciously, they would say, "Dude, wrong class. You're too big." Interesting. Yeah, I think he's going to do good. I know I, I went into the dark here because my because well, I was at my my you know, place for ten days. Ten yeah, days. Maybe 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 I said I'm at my place for ten days. I was there one day because I was at my place ten days. I didn't charge my battery because you don't use your phone. <laughs> Xavier um, makes a good point. All these guys are for, almost like every guy except for two guys were from Brazil. Why do you think no one's flying down there from the United States to compete in these shows? Probably afraid. Doesn't make sense. I mean, these the the, the top the, the <clears throat> this kid right here, uh, Fabio would have squashed a lot of people come down, and and frankly, people don't want to lose to quote a Brazilian because they, they, they right. I'm telling you, I know. Well, you, are you trying? Are you are, we, are you implying that maybe that there's favoritism in, in Brazil? No, no, the opposite. They don't. No, the athlete thinks that like <clears throat> they would rather do a show. Look at so why are we seeing Fabio? Fabio would have won a lot of the shows in the U.S. So I think people didn't want to go down because they're afraid of getting beat by people with quote no names. So that's how the would, reason. They didn't how would no Ramon have done? Would have Ramon have won the show? Oh, you just squashed that dude! Come on. So why didn't he do it? He's Brazilian. How many times do I have to explain it? What is the best? I know you told me he was tired, but that, that, so I'm not buying. Four thousand two hundred dollars. How much does the guy get for winning? Oh, you, oh, because the money wasn't good. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. I mean, All right. Ramon, that makes that Ramon, makes sense. Ramon, unless he gets poached, which we'll talk about off off the air. Mm -hmm. uh, R Ramon is going to be. I already said, if Ramon trains from here to the Olympia, he will win the when he will win the Olympia. Okay, so you guys have a strategy then. The strategy is forget these other shows. Let's focus on the Olympia. I, I would I would rather own the Empire State Building over ten other. I agree state. with you, but what I'm saying is that's the that's the game plan is what I'm saying because you don't give us the game plan. I have to pull it out of you. Well, that that's all you know. It it because it's an untalked about game plan because his his goal. You know what, <laughs> Dave, I brainwashed Jay. Cup. You can ask Jay. I brainwashed Jay that he was going to be Mr. Olympia. He told. Uh, I did from a kid, and when I met Ramon, I I've been on that. You know, you can win the Olympia from day one when people are like laughing. Right, right. <coughs> do you think we'll see uh, Bumstead do the Olympia? Yes. Okay. Without a doubt. I'm sure Ramon wants to beat Bumstead. Of course. He doesn't want to have Bumstead just no. retire. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, Jay, Jay wants to win the Olympia when Ronnie's on stage, not when, right. you know, no right. disrespect, but when, you know, Branch and Victor are on stage. and Yeah, it wasn't the same. You want to knock Mike Tyson out to get the title. You want to, you know, knock out Buster Douglas. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 100%. Understand. All right. Well, I'm I'm excited to see what Ramon will bring. Now, is gonna, Ramon going to train for more than eight weeks for the show? Yeah, he's training now. He's training right, now. Good. 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 <coughs> That's what we like to get. Now, good, so, good veto is good. When is Detroit? What What's the day uh, of that? It's Sunday. It's Sunday. So... The good thing is that he didn't have to, of course, <coughs> he'll have to travel, but he didn't have to travel, you know, for this show. Right. Because, <coughs> you know, that, that that trip from Brazil, that's a long trip to like. No, it's, yeah, it absolutely is. It's, it's what is it, eight hours to the States? And if you, no, Detroit no, is Detroit is no, all the way at the top of the country. It's going to be 12 hours from San Paulo. Well, I'm sure the... Uh, his Brazilian sponsor will send him first class. So. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> oh my God. Right, let me just let me see if I can find that. Where is this Detroit poster? I'm looking. Oh, here it is, Detroit Pro. All right. So that's coming up April 14th. That's next weekend. It's going to be on a Sunday, as Chris points out. They don't have, of course, they don't have the, God forbid, they put the competitor list up fucking before seven days out. That's Fuad. Fuad Abiyad is running that show. So. 
Trill oh, did you? Yeah, I sent you. I sent you and Jose the pictures of Gavino running up to the show, so you know what he was going to look like. No, I, I that Kamali and I were were you know. Kamali claims I almost mistake dinner because I told him that Good Vito was going to win the show because I, I said he looked he was the real deal and he looked really great and uh, so now he says I owe him a steak dinner but yeah Jose said I, he was too. Jose was, stays by that <coughs> that prediction <laughs> I still think I still think looking at the pictures you can make a case from winning the show for sure well, I, like, like I said I, I I certainly have the Tonio oh the reason Dave, I told, <coughs> the reason I said I brought that up is because you can see in the pictures where he's pasty white with the white background <coughs> that he's super detailed more so than with the tan. You know when people put on the tan to get the detail? Yeah. The mud tan just covered the detail. Yeah, I think it made it look worse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. What, That's what, right. what, did he, what did he put on? The one that I dislike the most. Which is what? The one Dan that Tan? turned... The one that turned Eduardo Correa green like a beanstalk, uh, the 2013 Arnold, I mean Olympia. <coughs> I can't say it because I might get sued. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. It begins you know with a J and has a T in it. <laughs> you know what? I will tell you one thing. Some people's skin chemistry can mess, doesn't mesh with the tanning stuff. And it does turn a weird color. And Dave, I, Dave <clears throat> this is, I this swear. Skin okay, prep he, is important, I'm telling you. <laughs> he turned. I'm Chris, what do you have, tuberculosis? What's going on over there? No, it's probably COVID. <laughs> <laughs> he, turned, he turned like leather. And the same event <laughs> happened to Eduardo Correa when he was getting ready for the 2013 Olympia. Oh, really? He turned, Maybe it's the Brazilian spices they use or something like that that's he, messed up. They, the he turned green, like the, the green I remember. Spot. No, I remember. I remember. And the tanning people asked when they came in with a straight face, and they they said he can't be green, can't be green. They came over and he saw that he was as green as a label. <laughs> and you know what they said? What? Did you eat potatoes on your back door? This if you, is, Dave, can you imagine me standing there? Because I was telling Eduardo, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win. I told you, Chris, we should have used the rice from Indonesia. <laughs> and they, 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 they asked, like, it's not our fault. Did you eat a lot of potatoes? They blame the potatoes, huh? Yeah. By the way, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> sure. George is full. We had a little teaser clip up with my interview with George Farrah, but <laughs> a lot of people ask me about the full interview. The full interview will be up this week. So I need I know to call the, Dr. George for my cough. You do. I'm, I'm actually upset because, you know, George, they're doing a, um, a screening in St. Petersburg, uh, which is not too far from me. Uh, uh, on the day, I think I'm going to St. Louis Pro that day, at the end of the month here. I, I'm going to miss the pre. The, I know Hanson's going, but I'm going to miss the red carpet. Event where George is going to do a little talk, and they're going to show the, the they're going to show the uh, documentary and everything. So I'm upset that I'm missing it. So Dave, did, did, I, did I not predict that there would be a documentary? <laughs> you did. What did I say the title would be? The Guru. You did. I. You know what the funny thing was? I said to George, I said, George, you know, when I found out you had cancer. Um, cause he was like, everyone was saying he was going to die. And you know, all these, the doctors were telling him he was going to die. I said, George, when I heard you had cancer, ask Chris as my witness. I said to Chris, there's no way George will die because Dave, 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 impossible. Dave. I said, he will beat cancer and he will be, they'll have a, a special interview with him about how he beat the cancer. I said, there's Dave, no doubt in my mind. Dave, what? that is 1000% true. You said, <laughs> quote, I don't care if the doctors give him a week. <laughs> it is an impossibility. That's yeah. what you said. And yeah. You said it like five or six different times to me. Yep. I said, there's no way he's dying. I said, George will be cancer. And we will find out the secret to how he did and, and you said, and you said that that's how we started talking about the documentary for people right. listening. Right. They made that prediction. Yeah. And then you said they would document or something. And I and then I went on and I said, you know what? They'll probably do a documentary on 
him being a guru <laughs> and they'll incorporate that in and they're going to call the movie guru that was dead on <laughs> yeah, off camera yeah, yeah, you did. but you yeah. did say you you never thought one no. second that no. uh that he would make it no. you, did you no. tell him that I told him that, and he's and he appreciated. It. I said, George, and he let he loved it. He loved it because he knew that I he, well, you just he knows that I know him. You're like you know, I hear George is really sick, and you, you he, know, talk because about George it. would figure out a solution to how to beat the cancer. And you know what the funny thing was? It's not really funny. He was misdiagnosed, you know, with cancer. When he if when you watch the interview, you'll hear the whole story. But he, they told him this. He went to this idiot doctor who was telling him he had hemorrhoids, and he's like, you know, when I'm pooping. It's like spraying out. Like it's like there's it's like the opening is not big enough. And sure enough, and he kept saying, Why don't you send me for a colonoscopy? And they're like, No, we just sent you for one two years ago. You had nothing there. You're fine. It's there's no way there's anything. And meanwhile, he had a blockage there and uh right in his rectum area. And of course, you know, he waited, you know, too long and it's it spread. So when eventually they then they had to give him chemo and you know he did a lot of alternative tra treatments in addition to the chemo he didn't you know he didn't pull a Steve Jobs and say you know I'm just going I'm going to you know drink wheatgrass and, and and cure my cancer he was not you know what the, 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 the saddest moment Dave the saddest George Farrah moment is and it should be in the documentary I was going to the Arnold and I was late for the for the night show the night show or the the night show. And I was coming from the hotel across the, you know, how the, 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 where you cross the street through the, whatever, the tube that connects the hotel to the, yeah. to the, the convention center. <clears throat> and then I went down in Columbus, the giant uh, escalator going down. And who was coming up? I could tell, weak as like, it was George and like the show's going on. And he had people in the show. I forget. He might right. have had, like Dexter or Branch or both. Mm. <clears throat> and I was coming down and I was like waving to him and like he was just like so down and I, I said uh, what, like where are you going you know the, like the show's on yeah. uh, all people you know what I mean because you expect them right. to go there and say Chris look at that my guys destroy your guys yeah yeah he didn't and say that he's, he's coming up and I asked him where he's going he said uh, I don't feel that good Oh, this is before he was diagnosed? I don't know when it was. You can ask him. It was. It might yeah. have been before he was diagnosed, yeah. Oh, by the way, first of all, George and I have no problem. We break his balls, but George and I are friends, and Chris and George are friends. He goes, this is not, there's no disrespect here. When it comes down to it, when people are sick, we all got each other's back here. I yeah. mean, this is, we're having fun, but George, we can laugh now because George did beat cancer. And, and you know what? That he's got he's got a great story to tell him, and he told it on the interview, and he's going to tell it in much more depth when you go watch the the documentary. And that's why I'm helping promote the thing because it, it it is it is a great thing what he did, you know. And we could we could you know argue about Dexter's conditioning versus Rodin's conditioning all we want, but at the end of the day, I don't want to see anything happen. Chris doesn't want to see anything. Yeah. Happen. I, I could I could I could text George right now. George, yeah. how would Dexter do at the 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 Arnold South America? He'd be <laughs> insulted that I asked him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, um, yeah, all good stuff. Once again, so the George Farah documentary, the Guru, is going to be on the red carpet at the end of the month, and uh, I, I don't know if it's open to the public or not. I, I know I was invited, but I and I know Hanson's going, but I, I don't know if it's open to the public. But you can probably contact George. On his Instagram and, and find out if uh, if you guys can go if you're in the area. St. Petersburg is you know pretty centrally located in Florida. If you're in the area, I'm sure uh, it would be cool. I think they get. I think it's going to be on Amazon Prime after that. I'm pretty sure because um, I think that's what George told me. But we'll put the link. We'll put up the link when it when it does go live. So anyway, that was a good interview with George. I'm glad we got finally got to talk to him. And, uh, you know, I think he wants to come on and do more shows on, especially a lot of, uh, you know, he's into really holistic medicine now that he got his, uh, his PhD and he is no longer the George, the guru. He's now Dr. Farrah. So I call him Dr. Farrah now. Uh, I Chris. call him Dr. Farrah. You before called him before that, doctor. before he was a doctor, you called him that. Yeah. <laughs> Someone wants us to talk about the Pittsburgh guest pose. You know, let's do that because you know what? That's coming up soon. The second about a month from now, uh, Jim Mannion actually sent me a um, he texted me the poster and said, How can I, I thought you're going to be guest posing for me this year. 
I said, no, Jim, I, I need a whole year to prepare. All that will be next year. I'll be guest posing. So. <laughs> what do you think about that? Rami's going to be there. Nick Walker is going to be there. Samson Dowd is going to be there. I want you to make a prediction because your predictions have been pretty accurate. Who will be the best guy there? Oh, uh, Nick by a mile because he's going to be a week out. And uh, that's true. People are just going to go nuts because he'll 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 be in shape, and uh, you know th that'll be a, a a big night for him because he's going to smash everybody because he's got a week <clears throat> week to show. Yeah, I, yeah, you're probably right. I, yeah, I, I, forgot, Ram, Nick, I forgot that Nick is going to be a week out. Yeah, Rami will probably be gigantic. Um, I'm, I, I predict Randy will be as biggest he's ever been. Hunter will be big too, I'm sure, because he's looking uh, huge now. Hunter is very big. Hunter yeah. Is very, yeah. And uh, you think Bumstead will get up on stage? Uh, no, he'll go with his, you know, uh, <clears throat> Turkish hairdo. And that did you know voice. Andrew Jack is going to be there? I know you coach him, but did yeah. you know he's going to be there? Um, yeah, I know he's going to be there. Oh. How's he looking? Oh, he looks pretty good. We just, you know, he just started. Uh, <clears throat> we just started doing pictures and stuff last week. Is he? Uh, is he big? He's big. Andrew is. Uh, um, I've said it before. Andrew set his mind to it. Um, don't be surprised what happens in December. Really? Okay. It's all, you know what? It's all, it's, uh, this sport is like retirement. It's about preparation. Yeah. That's what it's about. And you have to be able to plan and you have to have a good plan and you have to have uh, mental focus. How do you so, think Derek will look at this show? Um, big? <sighs> Yeah, he'll be big. It's going to be May tenth for the eleventh. That's yeah, Friday. he'll be big. I don't know. I don't. The, the reason I hesitate is I don't really know what he'll look like at the show. He'll be huge. I, I predict he'll be huge, but he'll be in good shape too. I guarantee he won't be fat. No. Does he get fat? I, I, I don't think I've ever seen him fat. Now, who is the, the worst? The worst conditioning of all time at the Pittsburgh Pro, right? Who is that? Sean Rose. Rose. Road and who that went on to like look the best at the Olympia. That's what I said, Dave. That's you know what? <clears throat> Do you think when Sean Roden looked like uh 10th place at the Nationals? Do you think I was worried even on, on a scale of 10 to on a scale of one to ten? Right. It's the same thing. I'm in the brainwash business. Yeah. I started with Jay and I told Sean <laughs> Bill can't beat you. Right. Can't beat right. you. Just gotta Come up with a plan, and you know what? Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes, uh, sometimes a long plan mm -hmm. is not as good as a short or midterm plan. You know, we we I referenced. You know, your body can get actually fizzle out and get tired. Right. Well, Nick Walker is certainly well rested. That's for sure. Well, he looks like he's on a good plan, too. Yeah, yeah. What, what are people talking about his legs? These guys in the comments are like, his legs look cooked up. He's got fucking great legs. What are you fucking talking about? You guys must be retarded or something like that. Yeah. He's got some of the best legs in the sport. Yeah, I, I saw him at Guy's opening. You know, he looked fat. <clears throat> and you know he's not fat, so that means he's huge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean in clothes he looked fat, yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? In, in the early years, Jay used to look, I mean, if he had a sweatsuit on with his big, big face, you know, eight weeks out, people, you know, if you didn't see him, they'd say, like, this, he can't be in shape in that sweatsuit. You know, he's too big. <laughs> Dorian was the same way. He was so big in that. that unbelievable. Yeah, he's, he's, he's looking huge. Oh, I think we're gonna. I think I, we're gonna. If, have I go, if I go to New York, by the way, Dave, I'm doing the wrap yes. up with his mother. With who? With his mother. Oh, well, I'm gonna be there too. Am I he, allowed in the wrap up too? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I told her. I said I, I want to. Uh, <laughs> Is his mother taking the place of Lonnie? Te Remember, we used to get Lonnie Teeper in the wrap up. Yeah, but she's, now, she's got a way better eye. Mother? She's got a better eye. She, she may have a better eye than. What about Car we got? We need Carlos Thomas Senior too in that in that wrap up, don't we? Why not? Why not? <laughs> 
from now on, yeah, we're going to bring parents into the wrap up. Yeah, we'll now. bring when parents I... because you know what? <laughs> we don't want we don't want any experts in there. We want parents in there. Yeah. Well, they're 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 more they're probably more qualified than than right. some people on Instagram will say, and yeah. you know, right? Why not? Yeah. Makes it entertainment, makes it exciting, and yeah. I think I asked Nick's mom straightforward question should give me straightforward answers i have 100 percent. she'd be like well you know chris i know you 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 speak highly of nick but you know two weeks out i thought he was much rounder through the chest and shoulders <laughs> of the stage. i told him too you know what what i wanted to just say before wrapping up the whole arnold the uh, south american thing i think i know that carlos was had some hardship in his family with losing a relative but he would have Carlos Thomas Jr. would have been great in this show. I think he, this this could have been a show he could have won, especially with Rafa being off a little bit. And uh, I think it was a missed opportunity, unfortunately. Hopefully, we'll see him on another stage soon. I don't know what what has he announced what he's doing it. Um, as far no, as you know, I haven't heard anything. I just uh, yeah, I didn't know why he he, he you know pulled out of the show. And then someone, yeah, it was was, somebody close to him passed away. And was yes, like, yeah, someone yeah, he lost someone who was very close, and he I guess it just messed him up a little bit. You got you got to be in the right you know you got to be in the right mental state uh, when you're competing. If not, you know, it's, it's going to be a disaster. You got to be mentally but, there. You know what, Dave? For for bodybuild, I mean that's that's life. You know, a lot of times most bodybuilders, you could say, hey, Carlos. Um, you know, your, your, your house, your father's house is burning down back home. And he'd be like, okay, I'm, I'll get shoulders today. I'll call the, you know, my father will take care of it. Or you could say like, uh, you know, all kinds of things you could be sideswiped with, but you know, when someone passes away, that's one way you, you just, you know, some you, people can deal with it by, by doing the diet and focusing on that. And some guys, it, they, it messes up their head for that that stuff. So it depends well, on what I mean, personality you are. There, there's a there's a Im bigger impact, right? Yes. There's, there's always that you know emotional impact as opposed to you know your car blew caught. You could be in Brazil and your car caught fire. Okay, you know, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll hopefully we we'll see uh, Carlos on a stage sometime soon. I guess that's going to wrap up today's show. Once again, uh, once we get more information on the Michael DeBool situation, we will fill you in. And once the security footage comes through, and we're going to get Michael on the TV show, hopefully this coming week. And congratulations to Rafa on the big win and uh, the return trip back to the Olympia. And uh, once again, I'm looking forward to what's so what's next? What's next week? Do we have some, oh next week is going to be Detroit. We have good veto in that show. Who's else is in that lineup? Chris? I didn't even. I wouldn't even. I think that good veto has a very good chance of winning that show. Yeah, I know he, he should be. You know, he's he's. Is Tony going to be in that show? I don't think so. I think he's doing New York. Oh, uh, okay. But I think that uh, you know, uh, good veto has a little bit of momentum because I thought I think that people thought. Many people thought that he was not going to really pan out. I mean, if you that he was just going to be a second string type guy, and yeah. I think that um, you know, there's a lot of stress on uh, not stress <clears throat> when you're doing your first pro show. It comes with a lot of butterflies. You know, you don't know really if you do actually fit in. Right. And then you do that show, you know, once you once you get your feet wet <coughs> and say, I belong, you know, it, it, it helps with your confidence. And, you know, uh, confidence is sometimes half your success. It helps motivate yeah. you, you know, right. to, yeah. to, to like really every day double down on your commitment where, you know, it's not like he wasn't committed before. Um. <clears throat> yeah, let me just give you the lineup. I got it from Sid here. Martin Fitzwater, who's going to be very good at this show and very hard to beat. Good veto. Justin Rodriguez, William Martins, who was fourth here. Uh, Ron Gordon, possibly Del Rosa, who didn't show up in, in the at the Brazil show. James Hollingheads, possibly. 
And that was from uh, Fuad last week. But uh, I, I guess Good Vito's main competition is going to probably be Justin Rodriguez and Martin Fitzwater, I would imagine. A lot yeah. of people think Fitzwater, this is his show to win. But I think Good Vito, if he can get that tan fixed, is going to be very dangerous on that stage, too. So. Dude, if 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 you 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 can post one of the pictures that I said. Del Rose is out. They said Del Rose. He's white as a ghost and like crazy. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yeah. So all right. Well, I think next week should be exciting. Should be a good show. It's going to take place on that Sunday. I have to ask: uh, Is there going to be a live stream for that show? I don't even know. I don't Hopefully. know what they're doing with that. Hopefully, if I don't have a live stream, we'll, I'll get the link. We'll put it in the uh, description below. For now, we are out of time, as we say every week here. With Heavy Muscle Radio, the truth hurts. Sure does. We'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for joining us tonight.